Lawmakers in Arkansas have been pushing to restrict reproductive rights further, and they actually just signed a new restrictive abortion law into law. Now, uh, it's referred to as Arkansas Act 45, and it was signed by the governor, uh, Governor Hutchinson, last Thursday, and it bans dilation and evacuation abortions. That's the most common abortion procedure during the second trimester of pregnancy. So the legislation effectively blocks abortions after 14 weeks by making the safest procedure a felony. So when Trump was campaigning on punishing women for abortion and people were like, that's crazy, no one really wants to do that. Well, it turns out that lawmakers in Arkansas do in fact want to do that. And so there have been a number of state laws passed that restrict abortion past 20 weeks. And to be clear, abortion past 20 weeks is extremely rare anyway. It usually only happens when the woman's life is at risk or if the fetus has severe abnormalities. Um, but in this case, they're going to dial it back even further to 14 weeks. And so a lot of women uh, wouldn't be able to get an abortion in the state of Arkansas. Now, this is clearly an undue burden, but if it does make its way to the Supreme Court, who knows how it would rule considering a very conservative Supreme Court nominee that just got chosen by, uh, the, by Trump. Now, there's another thing to keep in mind. With no exception for rape or incest and a clause that allows a woman's spouse or parent to sue an abortion provider, the law potentially allows the fetus's father to sue even in cases of spousal rape or incest. <clears throat> so let's say that uh, the man involved in this situation disagrees with the abortion. Under this new law in Arkansas, he would have the ability to sue the abortion provider. Um, and it doesn't matter if this person has been accused of raping uh, the woman or if this person is a family member and uh, had sex with her and got her pregnant as a result. So again, in terms of whether or not this will hold up in court, we'll see. Um, but it's scary to know that there are people out there who are in favor of this kind of draconian you know, measure. If you think this isn't um, a deliberate attempt to find four different angles at just halting a woman's right to do whatever she wants um, altogether, you're lying to yourself. Because uh, then, of course, again, we, we can in, 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 inject this in every story. The propaganda pushed around this. First of all, the, uh, the co-sponsor of the bill, uh, Mayberry, Mayberry, um, he was talking about, well, you know, there's, there's parts of the bill that wouldn't, there's two aspects. There's an injunction that the potential, um, I mean, I'm only categorizing the maybe rapist or ancestral father of unborn child as the people who could aggressively go after a provider for this. There's two ways. They could have the injunction or they could win monetary damages. Yeah. So he said, no, 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 there's things in place. They can't win monetarily, uh, monetarily in court over this. Come on, man, I'm not crazy. They can just stop a woman from doing what she wants after they potentially uh, raped her, even a spousal rape, and also an incest. Uh, it doesn't matter, it's still their child. So to think he can lower this and be like, look, you guys, I'm being honest about this. I'm, I'm somehow giving you guys, drop, throwing you a bone here. It's actually a different way of, of controlling another woman. By the way, mm -hmm. also in Arkansas, they require a 48-hour waiting period between an in-person abortion consultation and the procedure. That's right. And also, as you mentioned, this particular kind of abortion uh, is, is uh, what, the dilation and evacuation point. You have to then go to a clinic. There's only one yeah. in the whole damn state of Arkansas. So you have to take time off, maybe find some kind of way to get away from work or whatever else you're doing with your life, get there, have your consultation, 40 hour waiting period, go back, do it again. At that point, maybe you just go, this is too much trouble, or and then it takes too long, and right. they go, oh, look, you've waited too long. How dare you be so lazy? Or family members have been tipped off and yeah. they know that they can file there's legal all, proceedings against so you. There's so many angles to stop you. I like that you brought up that there's only one of these in Arkansas. That I, I, I could not believe because that is an insane amount of uh, pressure that you are putting on legal pressure on this, this clinic, this, one, this clinic. one clinic that does this one procedure that, again, Anna, you brought up uh, how rare it is that abortions take place within the second trimester, and I did a little bit of research in 2000. Or after the second trimester. After the second trimester. Mm -hmm. In 2013, the CDC reported that less than 3% of abortions take place during uh, or after the second trimester. So we're talking a minuscule amount, and there is one clinic in all of Arkansas. You, you, you can't grant a woman the dignity, the autonomy to make that decision to go to this one place. You have to make it as difficult as possible. Another interesting thing about what's going on here is that all the lawmakers that chose to comment were men. Yeah.
that's that usually happens though. That's that's that's, that's typical. insane. That's that's typical, and it's. They were trusting. They were looking for a female politician to come in and be there. I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure. It didn't, probably didn't work out for them. The, but, they always want well, they probably believe that her the place is in the of these, yeah. <laughs> The audacity of these guys, to, the, these guys to come forward and the way that they, they paint this procedure that is also used in the case of miscarriages when they need to remove the tissue from the woman's body. It's j the, the way that they just use this broad paintbrush to say that a woman's right to choose mm -hmm. is wrong and it's blanketly wrong and if you are disagreeing with me then what you are saying is that you want and they have these really like vicious language about about this tool going into a woman's uterus right, and ripping right. out the baby. And it's just such a mischaracterization of what's happening here. And there's one clinic that's just fucking fighting for survival. They're fighting the for survival and then they have to worry about legal action being taken against them by family members who disagree with a woman's decision to do what she feels is necessary with her own body, yeah. right? So in a sense, it's a way to intimidate this clinic Absolutely. from doing what this clinic does, right? And also keep in mind, when it comes to this punishment, um, it, it does take a hard line against the dilation and evacuation procedures, making their use a Class D felony punishable by a $10,000 fine or six years in prison. So it is a punishment, it's a huge punishment, and it is used as a form of intimidation uh, to ban a clinic or, or convince a clinic to do something that as of now is constitutionally protected to do. By the way, one final thing that I wanted to add about this. So the dilation and evacuation procedure is the most common, and so that's the reason why they're targeting it. But they have to give us a reason other than that for why they're targeting this specific form of abortion, right? Do they think it's unsafe? Do they think that it's risky? Because they're only banning it in the context of an abortion. This exact same method is used if a woman miscarries and they have to, you know, clear out her uterus of tissue. So... Obviously, it's not unsafe because it's common. It happens all the time, and there aren't any mishaps that we report on, right? And obviously, you're okay with it being used when it comes in the context of a miscarriage. So what is your reasoning? Why do you want to ban this specific type? We know the reality is that you just don't want abortion to be legal, but you have to lie to us, right? You have to come up with some other reason. So what's your reasoning? And it's the method that is endorsed by the World Health Organization. That's so right. So what, how, how are these male lawmakers going to speak out against the World Health Organization that have endorsed this procedure as the safest way and the, the, for the for the life of the mother, I just don't understand why that's not important here. Like why the they don't care about the, the life and the, the rights of the mother are clearly just not as important. And that's what I that's what I just don't understand. I think it's also important to mention that this law is very similar to a law that exists in Alabama, Kansas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Mississippi, and West Virginia, where it's different. Is where the family members are allowed to sue, and that's what's so dangerous. Because again, I, I just don't think we can stress enough that saying that this is a felony, you're punishing a woman for one of the most difficult. Decisions decisions that that a person can make yeah and you're punishing her for that and there's already just one clinic operating the whole story just the whole story sucks you're taking away someone's autonomy to make this choice to be fair to Mayberry mm -hmm. uh, there's one more exception um, it requires it, it, it don't it, she it, it does take into fact uh, harm to the mother mm -hmm. so um, it required irreparable harm to the point of permanent disability of a woman for her to get out of this like, well, you have to be totally, like, on the brink of death before. But, by the way, who determines that? These four guys who came out and said, you know what? I, I don't see where this pain comes from, man. It took them two months to write this up, so I have a feeling they didn't really think that one through, JR. <laughs> Are you sick of the mainstream media? Then I got good news for you. We're going to hire some investigative reporters, and we're going to go house. We're actually going to investigate what's happening in this country and stand up for you guys. Help us do it. Go to tytnetwork.com slash go. If everybody watching this video just gives a little bit of money, we'd have plenty to hire those investigative teams and unleash them on the country.